Welcome to the Evolve WMMA podcast, featuring the greatest upcoming female fighters on the planet. They are women who have gone against conventional thinking to pursue their dreams. These fighters inspire, empower, and unleash excellence within a new generation of female warriors as they rise and evolve into the best possible version of themselves through the power of mixed martial arts. Hey, 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 this is Evolve WMMA, and I'm your host. Shelly Devine. So this week's guest started her martial arts training in Taekwondo when she was just seven years old. And then she moved on to BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, at the age of 13. And she is now a brown belt. Her first Amy Muay Thai fight was back when she was 18 years old. And then um, she started her MMA career when she was 20 and she went pro in July 2017 at the age of 23. As a professional strawweight fighter, she has a record of seven and three MMA fights. Of those 10 fights, two were losses via decision, but six of the wins were via TKOs. So this chick finishes her fights. She has fought for Invicta FC, Bellator, and most recently, Ryzen. I'd like to welcome to the show, Lindsay Van Zandt. So, hey, welcome, Lindsay. It's so great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm glad your your manager reached out. I was actually just starting to get up and mo- get up and going again. Like we we've been on a little bit of a a lull with all this pandemic. <laughs> how how are you um, surviving in your neck of the woods with this pandemic stuff going? On? I mean, I'm I'm doing okay. My sister's bakery is open for a while, but um, after Easter will be like closed. But I think she's still accepting like orders and stuff, so she's still baking and everything. But you know, I'm not working as much, and so I have a little bit more free time, sure. but uh, I'm losing my mind. I miss, like, punching people in the face and doing jujitsu. but I have, I, I moved all my stuff out of my uh, room, and it's my bed and living room, so I set up a gym in my room, so I have, I have been lifting weights, and I can go pretty heavy, which is nice, that's keeping me sane. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, I mean, for me, I, last week, I really had an episode with, I, I worked out with um, my boot camp group. And then after that, I worked out with a private training client on Zoom on this. And then (laughs) after that, I was still like, (laughs) I went out for a three mile run, came back, still chomping at the bit. And I'm (laughs) like, I need to punch something. Oh my God. Yeah, it's just not the same. Like I need to get a bag in here. That's what I really need. (laughs) That's what I need too. I need, I was like, could somebody just drop off a heavy bag at my house, please? (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying not to order anything else because I already ordered like my rack for my like squat setup and benching and stuff. But like, I need a bag. So I might have to order more stuff. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's it's tough. I'm like, I don't know how like people are, you know, like even the gyms are going to handle this. Um, So um Aside from that, let's get into you. How did you start off um, to give our our um, our viewers um, a little bit about you, your your martial arts background? I know you started, I think, very young at the age of seven. But how how did that all kind of flow and transition into MMA? Yeah, uh, yeah. So I did Taekwondo when I was seven, and I did that for about five years, and I was kind of getting bored and uh, frustrated because of the way the system works in Taekwondo. Like I'd be jumping over people, breaking boards and stuff. And then there'll be this kid next to me that can't even like lift his leg off the floor. And we're both like second to be black belts. I'm like, what? This is, this is not okay. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I ended up um, starting Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then that gym ended up having a little bit later on, I ended up starting doing Muay Thai classes and boxing classes. Like I got an MMA instructor in there. And I was like, this is so much fun. And I wanted to fight uh, my parents really weren't that cool with it because they just they wanted me to get a normal job and live a life where I can like afford things because like let's face it MMA doesn't really pay that well for the the athletes until you get up to like one percent where you can make some money so they're like you know they just want me to be able to you know afford things and live like a nice life so I I get it I get it but like this is my passion so you know I'm still going (laughs) I'm still kicking but um yeah so I 
ended up fighting when 18. At 18, I did a Muay Thai fight, and I remember I was so ready. Um, I got in there, and I just couldn't remember anything. I, like, froze. I ended up winning because, like, the third round, I woke up a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I saw her drop her whole lead hand, and I was like, I'm going to kick her in the face. And I kicked her in the face and dropped her, so that kind of helped me win the fight. But after that, I was like, oh, my God, this is so much fun. This is what I want to do. And right. so uh, after that, I just kind of kept training. All I did is always just keep training. I went to Florida for school and uh, got my bachelor's degree in nutrition and fought a couple times down there. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, came back up here to be my family and trained up here and pro. And here I am, seven and three, a couple of years later, and I'm just loving it. <laughs> yeah, so you're like 26 or something? Or? Yeah, 26. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're, I mean, you're, this is still early in, in your fight career and, and you, you're fighting professionally. And I, I did note that um, in the introduction that you have, most of your wins are, are by a TKO of, or a submission. I like to finish you're a finisher. <laughs> you're a finisher. You like it. Yeah, when I don't finish it, it pisses me off. I don't care if I win or lose, but I need to, I like, I just want to finish. Like if I, if I win with decision, I feel like I didn't really win. I, I don't know. It's just like, I need to finish. I need to know that I finished it. And uh, my last couple of fights have been a little rough that way. So I'm like, uh, I need to train. <laughs> wow. So is that just from maybe the, the initial feeling of when you head kick that girl back when you're an Emmy and, and you just <laughs> want to feel that again? Yeah, that feels so good. <laughs> I'm sure they don't like it, but I mean, I, I get it. It's like, <laughs> I mean, what do, you, what do you think that is? I, I mean, I've never explored this with anybody, but I, I find it fascinating. Is it, do you think it's egotistical or do you think it's just like, wow, it's a rush or it, it's, it's a control thing? What do you, I mean, like. It's probably like a com combination of those. I think that um, just knowing that my technique is perfect because like, I'm like perfectionist and I love like, you know, having the perfect timing, the perfect control, the perfect technique, and when it lands perfectly like that, I'm like, yeah, I did it right, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then, like, the sound it makes, and then they stop, like, when they stop the fight, it's like, oh, like, it, like, there's the rush, and you're like, like, that is, like, the best experience in my life, so, like, anytime I win like that, I'm just like, oh, I want to do it again, <laughs> and then yeah, when I lose, right. I'm like, I need to train harder so I can do that again, <laughs> It's kind of a weird, freaky thing because you know your opponent is wanting the same thing. <laughs> you know, like they're not going to want to do it to you. So there's this level of competition, I get, you yeah. know, obviously. And, and um, you're kind of like, I, I mean, it's almost like perfecting your t technique. And it's not just the technique. Like you just said, it's timing. So much, yeah. And, and, and the observation where you said, oh, I saw this chick drop her hand and then I knew. I'm like, yeah. I found the hole. I found, yeah. <laughs> you know, did you feel like you're in the zone that, you know, people talk about where you're getting into this, um, you know, sensation of a vibrational thing where things get into slow-mo and all that? Yeah. All that? Um, yeah, yeah. I felt that in a couple of fights. And I think that, you know, all of us fighters, like, they always say the fight game is pretty mental. And it is because we're all trying to find where we can perform at our best and getting in the zone in that particular moment because it's hard to get in the zone with everything going on the crowd yeah. with the ball, how training went how confident you feel leading up to the fight and it's just like so much that goes into it so i think that's that's all that we're doing oh well, lost um, yeah well, there you uh, go. So, good sorry yeah. my sister was calling i told her i had an interview no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, um i'll call back later yeah so i um there's just so many things that go into it so you know it's you just got to figure out how to get in that zone and how to repl replicate, like being able to perform at your best. Cause I mean, a lot of fighters talk about it. Like I think the, the best lately has been like time on Woodley saying how like he just felt like he was in a nightmare and he couldn't get out of it and he just knew he was going to lose. And I've had that experience too. And it sucks as a fighter to go through stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, you're fighting at a specific time and it, like somewhere you don't even never been before. There's so much going on. And it's like, it's just really hard sometimes to perform at your best because you know what you're capable of. And when you don't do that, that's when like, that's what we all feel. Right. That's what we all like, don't want to happen. And yeah. you know,
but you can't control everything. So sometimes it happens. And then like, you want that rematch because you know, you can beat that person. (laughs) Right, right. It's getting the ideal conditions down too. It's not just about you being at your, your peak performance. I mean, I just got off doing an interview with Carrie Kennison and she went into that Invicta tournament and she was like, you know, she, she, everything was going smooth. And then when she got there, she was sick that she woke up sick that morning and, and then she's got to go into a fight. So you, and she's like, I didn't see it coming, you know, like, and, and she's like, it's not an excuse, but I mean, that's what happened. So that there's sometimes these outside influences, conditions, when you guys are going in or stepping into the cage, that you have absolutely no control yeah. over. <laughs> and, and you're like, you're still bound to fight and you might not be at your peak yes. performance, yeah. which is really, you know, kind of a fascinating kind of thing because as an athlete, you're, you're in this position of, of reaching that high level peak performance at a certain period of time in space. Mm-hmm. You're, you're allowing yourself to be competitive in that space against one other individual. And, and you know, you gotta, you gotta show up. Yeah. And, and it's like, <laughs> it's like all this other stuff that goes into it. And I don't think, you know, people really realize you get you, you people sitting on the couch at home and they're criticizing yes. fighters. Like, oh, I could do better than that. It's like, you have no clue what that person went through to get there. You know, it's such a roller coaster of emotions. And so, yeah, yeah, that's why when people say like, hey, you don't know unless you get in there. It's really true because like you said, like, there's so much that goes into it, like leading up to the fight. So, yeah. So how do you relate that to your life? Like, um, you know, like you're, you're, you're studying to be um, a nutritionist. Is that correct? Or? Yeah, I got my bachelor's in uh, nutrition and dietetics when I was in Florida at the University of North Florida, and um, I'm doing my master's, so it's funny, like, <laughs> the first time I got an injury is when I broke my hand uh, after my third fight would be win, and I, uh, I ended up winning that fight, which was awesome, but I, like, after that, I was like, oh my god, I can't walk, I just moved, I didn't even finish unpacking it, like, I moved the week of that fight, yeah. and all my stuff was everywhere, I, had, I couldn't move, it was terrible, and so I ended up just finding some jobs that I could do, but I was like, I need to set myself up for a while when I have an injury and I can't be physical, because even when I, I, you know, I am like my, most of my main jobs, I do personal training and stuff. So I'm like still moving. So I'm like, I need to find, so I really like nutrition and I can do it online. So I'm like, all right, well, if I can set myself up for when I like injure myself again, that was mm-hmm. probably a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm trying to work on that right now with all this downtime, because sure. I'm always trying to study after training, but let's face it, when I get home at 10 o'clock at night and I need to shower and eat, it is not happening. <laughs> so. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm trying to be good right now and study and get all that done. So, so you're very productive, <laughs> very productive. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so do you feel like, um, as an analogy or, you know, like, um, uh, does, does your MMA practice, like what you do to be successful? Cause you're a successful fighter. Thanks translate into the other areas of your life like the the discipline the you know gaining confidence and how do you see that you know transitioning or being kind of the flip-flop into your everyday life because i i I feel like when fighters especially female fighters you guys it's it's basically the same story with a lot of you you you're like this is something i'm so passionate about i love it you know like but it does not sustain me financially but i'm still gonna do it yeah. <laughs> and so you're finding something else to do to supplement that so you can actually still fight. Yes. And and how do you translate the actions that you take to be a fighter into okay, I got to support myself. And you know, do you, do you take those actions of discipline and um, you know, being strategic and setting up your life outside of it so you can do that. And how do you yeah. how do you juggle it? Dude, it's so hard, you know, I'm not perfect, and I try, um, obviously, when you're passionate about something, it's easy to, easier to do it, and I love nutrition, so it's been easy for me to study, but when I'm training, especially, I've been, I had five fights last year, so I didn't really have that much time, and then, like, trying, like you said, trying to make money to, for, like, my everyday life, my bills, it's like, I'm always living, like, month to month, I think, like, most girls are, and, or any fighters in general, because, you want to train as much as possible. So like, I mean, I'll give you an example of one of my days, like Mondays, 
all crazy. Like I would get up at six o'clock in the morning, go to Kings of Fitness, do my strength and conditioning for two hours, travel an hour to Kingston to do Muay Thai, drive 45 minutes back to my house, change quickly, shower, grab my food, get to the bakery to work for six, seven hours, eat when I was there, I'll get in trouble because I'm not supposed to do that. And then, <laughs> and then I would go back to the gym and drill some jujitsu and then go to bed at 1030. Oh no, get home at like 10, 1030, eat, shower, go to bed and like wake up and do it the next morning. I'm like, obviously I'm definitely overtraining, but I just love it so much. And like, it's just so hard to juggle everything. And um, like you said, like, transferring over like being so consistent and being disciplined and getting what I need to done even the things that you don't want to do like some of my strength and conditioning things are so hard I'm like I hate this I mean I love it because I love I love working out too but yeah. I'm like some things are hard it's like oh, I don't want to do another three rounds of this yeah. like I don't be doing like five minute rounds of just sitting on this uh sitting on this tile with 185 pounds on my waist and just walking and it sucks it's mentally yeah. tired after a workout but I just like dig deep and I get it done because I know that that's what's going to get me through in a fight. And that's how I'm going to get that belt, you know? So, but like, even in everyday life, I'm like thinking, okay, I got to be disciplined. I need certain times where I need to study. And for the most part, I'll do it. But there's so little time of training and working. And then like, you're getting burned out. So you're like, okay, I should relax for like an hour or two and like watch a show. But then you're like, oh shit, I should have been studying. It's like, really hard to find a balance <laughs> I can so, imagine wow. yeah so I like try to be as good as I am in fighting with like studying in my every other day like life but it's it's hard I'm not gonna lie I'm not that good at it <laughs> I well I gotta applaud you I think anybody that can step in the cage and then and then to um you know go and study f in, inside another career I mean th that's two full-time um and, you know, like two, two full-time jobs, yeah. <laughs> you know, like all at once and, and you're, it, it's nonstop. And then too, I mean, there must be some mental overload for that too, where, you know, what do you do for downtime? Uh, my downtime is usually studying. I do watch some shows on like Netflix, like at night, like oh. say, like, I like to eat and watch something. So I'll always watch a show. Yeah. Uh, when I'm eating, then I usually like fall asleep, but you're not supposed to do, you're supposed to eat and then let your body digest, but we don't got time for that. So I just go to sleep. <laughs> well, you're young. I'm sure your digestion and your metabolism like skyrocket and anything. You probably, yeah. that, that burns through you like fuel, like, it like does. You it's know. hard to keep weight on, honestly. Yeah. Like people will probably hate me because my weight cuts are so easy, but I'm like right now I'm excited because this is like the biggest I've ever been in a while. I'm like 118 making gains because all I could do is lift. So like, you know, car like fight cardio, you know, me running around punching people in the face isn't happening. So yeah. it's easier to keep weight on. But once I start training, like I feel like in a week or two weeks in, I'll already be back to like 112. Like I'll hit 110 sometimes. I'm like, oh crap, I got to eat more. But that's like finding time to eat more. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my gosh. So yeah, funny. planning planning your diet is going to be huge yeah. and making sure <laughs> – you know, you, you, you're eating enough, I, I would suppose, like, and then two, yeah, between driving and packing a lunch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to be good. Cause then I go to the bakery and oh my God, girl, if I haven't eaten before I've been there, I'm having mm -hmm. like five cookies. I'm like, I need to stop. <laughs> oh, no, I but I'm, I've gotten better. At first, when I started working there, it was bad. And then I'm like, okay, I'm allowed one thing a day. If it's a cookie or a croissant or a slice of cheesecake, whatever but you get one thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, you are lucky if you don't have to worry about the weight cut and everything, you know, like, yeah. and you can basically eat what you want. You have a, a, a good uh, digestive yeah. cycle. It is nice, yeah. but that's my problem. Though, I'm like, oh, I can have another one because like, I don't have to cut weight, but it's like, I want to be good because I know like nutritionally, I want to get like, you know, good foods in my system and not, you know, all that sugar. So it's really hard because I'm like, I can get away with it but do I want to? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, do you ever notice that it might play a role in emotional roller coastering? Meaning like, say if you were continuing eating like sugary product, you know, foods and stuff like that, baked, baked goods, that it will affect you in your training. Oh yeah. I feel a difference. Like if I eat, oh, my sister makes really good breads and I, I usually don't eat a lot of bread and why is because if I eat bread before I go and train, I just feel like crap. I feel slow. I feel sluggish. Yeah, sluggish. So I usually don't have a lot of bread, but girl, I'm telling you when bread I comes like out bread. of my oven and it is I nice know. and warm, I will feel like I should never have like cold bread again because when it's coming out of the oven, it's fresh like that. Huh? 
It is so good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, who doesn't love bread? I love right? it too. <laughs> so, but you definitely notice a slug, like a sluggish. Oh, yeah. If you are having a little bit more of that than say your greens and your, you know, yeah. you know a good piece of protein. I or, feel definitely like feel that. slow. Definitely yeah. feel slow. Yeah, I can imagine. I feel fat, even though I know I'm not. But in that moment, I'm like, I feel like I'm 20 extra pounds. <laughs> yeah, like bloated, like a bloated. Yeah, feeling. bloated, bloated. Yeah, I mean, it's that, that. These are the terms that we should be using instead of fat. I mean, women right? tend to use fat. fat, but it's bloated. It's it's yes. hanging on to stuff in your body, and then it's yeah. causing an effect in your in your yeah. stomach, in your digestive system, in your intestines exactly. that make make you hang on to it, which you're like, no, I want to get this out of me. <laughs> You know, it's but it's some yeah. really weird reason your body hangs on to it. I know. I've been, I just recently made, I had bananas and uh, oatmeal and Ooh, um, peanut butter. And I made these little breakfast bars, but I, I, oh. I haven't been, I haven't been eating oatmeal in a little bit. And so I noticed that my weight went up a little bit and I'm holding on to it a little longer and it's just yeah. subtle. It's subtle. Yeah. And, but I did notice, I was like, oh, but I'm like, mm. I'm still finishing the, that, that plate of breakfast bars. I, made. <laughs> I mean, they're in the refrigerator. I probably have about 10 of them left. So I got 10 days to have one breakfast bar because there I'm like, go. oh my God, they're so good. And you made them. <laughs> yeah. And I made them. So that, that's like my little, my little breadish treat lately, there you go. Um, which is kind of a, you know, silly little thing, but you know, we do what hey. we gotta do to have our treats. I feel especially like a little dog, are... like getting my bone. <laughs> exactly. Well, especially when you're stuck at home and like, all you want to do is pick all day. At least you have like a healthier treat to have, you know, Exactly. and there's some, there's some protein in there. You got some peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love peanut butter. Oh my gosh. Me to go. I had protein waffles last night with peanut butter and chocolate really good. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yummy. Wow. My go-to. <laughs> so tell me who, who's influenced you? Who, who do you, you know, who do you look to that has influenced you along your, your martial arts journey? Oh, so many way? people. So many people. Yeah. I, um, I'm lucky. I mean, like we all have like the way, like we all have our pathway to where we are now. And, um, I've had a really cool pathway. I've met some really cool people when I was like 16. Um, my first boxing coach is named Mike Dewall. He actually lives in the area, so I, I see him all once in a while. We'll get lunch and stuff. He's awesome. He's always been there for me through the hard times. He's always helped me, like, figure out what I need to do. And, um, yeah, I remember the, when I, before I actually met him, I was training jiu-jitsu on the mat, and I'll never forget this. I remember him talking to the owner of the gym and said, that girl's going to be really good one day. And, you know, I haven't had the confidence then. I was 16, you know, I'm right. still like new. I was a blue belt in jujitsu at the time and I'm just rolling. And him saying that, I was like, yeah, he's right. Like, I can do this. Like, I'm going to be good one day. He said I'm going to be good one day. So I'm going to be good one day. And I always, and he had, it's so funny because he never knew that it affected me that much until like, I think I was like maybe a year ago when we were having lunch one time. I was like, remember that time? He's like, oh, no, no, no. And I was like, dude, that really, those words stuck with me. And he's like, wow, that's really cool. That's so cool. Because you always think, oh, you know, words don't hurt and you know, whatever words. But they do affect people. So you have to be careful. Oh. Like I, and like, though, that's a very specific moment where I'm like, that was really, that's gotten me through some tough times. When I, when, like people have doubted me and told me that I'm being stupid and I shouldn't be training and I shouldn't. I'm pursuing a career that's stupid or doesn't make sense for my future. And I'm just, I just like, no, but I'm going to be good. And I, and I know I can be good. So it, it really pushed me through. So like, it's nice to have people like that in your lives, even yeah. when I don't even know it, but yeah, like I said, right. it's always been there for me. So it's really cool how like, it's, it was very simple. Like she's going to be good one day. It's not even like, uh, not that big of a deal, but it really did help me when I was younger. So it was pretty cool. So he's one of the guys that I'm so thankful for. And, I'm still friends with today. I don't know if forever. I actually babysitted his kids and stuff. Like, we just, I've just grown up uh, with him and he's awesome. Uh, when I went to Florida, um, I met some awesome guys down there that are doing really good in MMA as well. And um, so, shout out to Jacksonville. Um, but um, the first promotion I fought for for MMA, um, they, they were amazing. Um, combat night look them up. They're doing great things now. They're doing pro events too, like any pro events and stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah, they were so cool. Um, I did my first MMA fight with them and I was so excited because it was such a buildup. I mean, I didn't do my first MMA fight until I was, uh, I forget, like 20. Mm -hmm. So I had my first Muay Thai fight when I was 18 and just waiting that, that, that was such a long wait and I've been training for so long. So I was very excited to like get in there and it was just a really cool experience. And 
to see them grow and you know now they're going to be on the Dana, Dana White uh, contender series and stuff and just seeing how that promotion's grown and everything and just seeing all the guys from Jacksonville do well is really fun. So they've been a very big uh, influence in helping my career, uh, you know, helping me in my career and, uh, you know, helping me get better. Um, they have really good wrestling. My wrestling definitely improved when I was in Florida. I remember that. I was excited. Um, and then when I came back here, Brian McLaughlin at Precision and Amanda Poughkeepsie, um, he's always – I helped me with my career. He helped me with my first pro fight. He just went overseas with me to Japan. So he's done a lot for me, uh, so much. He's helped me so much. He's, he's gotten me a lot of stuff that I just, you know, I'm so thankful for that, you know, I'll never be able to repay him, but he knows I love him for that. And he's just a good coach and he's done a lot. Uh, he's brought me places to train. He's bring people up to train with me and stuff. He just does anything he can to help me get better. And um, I also train, like I mentioned before, at Kingston. Uh, Chris Mysterio has been – a great influence in my life too uh, from Muay Thai. Uh, he's changed a lot of my techniques and helped me improve so much in the last couple of years that I've been with him. And there's some great guys up there as well. So it's really cool. That's like the, one of the greatest things about this sport is that you get to meet so many cool people. I know. And right? like along the way, just even going to events and like just, it's so much fun to like connect with people all over the world, like talking to fans and stuff and you know, it's just so cool because you meet so many cool people. Like, you could just go and travel to a gym, say, hey, what's up, train with them. And then, like, you just – it's just cool. You get this cool connection wherever you go because if someone knows MMA, I could just talk for hours about MMA. So it's yeah, really right. fun to <laughs> always be able to, like, talk to someone somewhere because the sport's grown so much since when I started. I remember when I started, I was – when I was younger, uh, nobody knew what jiu-jitsu was, you know. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, oh, I'm going to jiu-jitsu. What's that? Like, that's weird. Yeah. And I'm like yeah. – now they know, though. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Now a lot of people know. Now they're like, that chick was cool. And I'm like, I tried to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so, so no, it's Some really of the cool. girls, some of the girls that you train are the Hen Henzo Gracie girls. Um, how have they influenced you? Oh, they're so much fun. Well, in a group chat now, we're putting some cool uh, work together to post. So I'm really excited for that. Um, there's a lot of hashtag movements going on right now. But they're all so awesome. They're all we're all in the same boat. It's so much fun to talk to them and like share our experiences and help each other get through like hard times like now. And um, when you don't have a fight coming up and like, we always just want to fight. Um, like Deanna Bennett, she's amazing. Um, Aaron Blanchfield and like all the, you know, like they're also in Invictus. So, like we're always like, God, we need more Invictus events. Oh, we want to get on the next card. I'm like, how cool would it be to all be on the same fight card together? It'd be really dope. Um, yeah. So we're hoping that happens one day. Um, but Christy Hannaford, she's amazing. Um, Raquel Harris, uh, this girl, she's still an amateur, but man, when she hits the post, she can be like lighting people up. And it's really fun because she's in my weight class. So like we have a great time training together. And I just, um, it sucks. That I live so far away from them. Um, and yeah. I'm hoping they're staying safe in the city right now. But yeah. Um, no, yeah, I'm so lucky to have them. Like I said, like we just helping each other uh, figure stuff out and get ready for fights. And like, there's nothing like a connection of helping someone else get ready for a fight. Because like it's so it's like so many emotions that go into it. It's like mental and physically, and just helping each other. It's just it's so much fun. Like you, just, there's nothing like a connection of a training partner, and then sure. it's just it's great. I love those girls. I miss them so much, and it sucks because I tore my MCL in January, so I was kind of out for a oh, little bit. Wow. And then this whole thing happened, and I haven't seen them since last year, and it's so. <laughs> Wow. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you really did. You really did have a busy year. You had like something like five fights last year. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. Well, thank God. Cause now I'm having all this downtime and I'm You're like, right. but it's kind of bad. So it's like the complete opposite. Like I'm fighting so much and like not fighting at all. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Wow. Losing it. Losing it. <laughs> so what are, um, uh, a couple of things, um, that you do that are essential to your success in leading this empowered life? Um, I'm always um, analyzing, reanalyzing, and organizing all my goals and plans. And I'm always a very planned person, probably sometimes too planned. So I got to tell myself to just do sometimes. But um, yeah, I think a couple of things that I always do is I'm always looking at my goals, always making sure that everything I'm doing is helping me reach my goals. And that kind of started when I was in high school and not even knowing it. But now looking back, I'm like, wow, I always had this. Um, mm -hmm. I just always wanted to make sure everything I was doing was helping me become the best fighter I can be. Like when I was younger, I was asking like, what do you want to do with your life? And I'm like, I couldn't tell him I wanted to fight because nobody like agreed with that at the time. So I was just like, oh, I want to do nutrition. I want to do personal training because those are things that would help me get better as a fighter. So like now 
And now it's cool because I can help other people as well because I know what I'm doing. Sure. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm very passionate about those things too. I'm all about trying to be the best fighter I can be. So like I've always – just lined everything up like that. So help like pursuing nutrition and personal training is helping. Um, so that's one thing is just always looking at my goals. And all thing is like telling people about my goals and like saying, Hey, I want to finish this master's program by this date because then it keeps you honest. And they'll be like, Hey, like, I'm like, and then I'll tell them like, yo, you better check up on me next week and making sure I'm reading or making sure I'm studying. Um, or like, I'll who, who keeps you accountable? Who keeps you accountable? A lot of my training partners, my family, my mom loves that. I'm, you know, pursuing nutrition and stuff because like I said, she wants to make sure that I can pay my bills. So, she sure. keeps me accountable for things like that. But my training partner is like, they all think I'm crazy, which I am. We all know I'm crazy. But I'll be like, hey, like, I, I mean, I've started wars with people. I'll be like, how many pull-ups can you do? And like, one week I'll do like 200. And then my partner will be like, yo, I just did 300 the other day. I'm like, damn, now I got to go do 400. So like, I always like things I want to get better. Like, I want to do more pull-ups. I'll like, I'll just challenge people, you know? So I'll just yeah. keep it they look accountable and they keep me accountable. And it's fun. Like, I'll even, like, I'm training partner. I'm like, he wanted to read more. And I'm like, all right. I'm going to read tonight. I'm going to text you when I'm done reading or you better hit me up tomorrow and make sure I read, you know? So trying to find people that keep you accountable is a big thing because it doesn't matter if you say you're going to do it. If somebody didn't see if you did it or not, like it kind of makes you want to do it more because you're like, oh shit, they're going to check on me. I got to make sure that I read tonight. Otherwise they're going to be like, oh, she sucks. She didn't read, you know? So <laughs> keeping yourself accountable. And then I, I always make lists of like every week what I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And of course, I don't always accomplish everything because I always set my goals way too high for myself. So that's a problem. Um, but I always like set goals of things I want to do every week and things I want to do every day. Like this is what I want to do today. If I want to get one thing done, this is what I want to get done. So just so do like. You use like a little journal of some kind or. Oh, yeah. I have a track journal. I highlight. Um, I have like weekly like checklists. I'm, I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Do you, Even, like, do you work out hand write it? Do you hand write it? Or do you have like, I mean, I you're like do. a kid of, you know, the internet and you got your apps and like you're recording everything. How do you do it? I'm so old school. <laughs> That's good. I like, I'm so old school. I print out pieces of papers every week and I like use different colors and I highlight and yeah, it's, it's crazy. Especially when I have a fight coming up. Um, like I'll even like write, like making sure that I do everything I need to do every week. Like, okay. Um, making sure I'm having enough vegetables, making sure that I'm training MMA, Muay Thai, boxing, wrestling, I'm getting in my ground and pound skills, like mm -hmm. making sure I hit pads this many times and I hit the bag, I do my cardio, like there's just so many lists. <laughs> making sure I give all my sponsors shout outs, like <laughs> so many things. So yeah, did, um, you, did you realize that there's a correlation with writing things down and then them actualizing as opposed to typing them in or fingering them in into like a, you know, yeah. like there's a correlation there between that. Cause I know you, you're, you're, you're studying holistic nutritional health, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just assuming this, but I would think that if you're studying that you, you are coming from an approach of having everything holistic in your life. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm actually correct. really excited. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I am um, yeah. all about keeping it natural and then like you said, I like writing things down. I think that helps the brain more than just typing it. Well, at least that's how it is for me. I mean, everybody's different. But I feel like another thing that I do a lot is I write down like training wise. Like if I go drill jujitsu, like I'll write down like certain things that I was doing wrong to fix. And like mm -hmm. that way I'll, I'll go back and I'll read it, my mistakes. Or I'll go back a couple of weeks later. I'm like, oh, I need to drill that again. That was really good. I really liked this. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll write down if I had a good day of sparring or what I want, like, a lot of things that I do, um, like before, before I sprawl, like especially at Hensel Gracie's because those girls are tough, I'll be like, all right, I want to work on this, this, and this. And then like after I'll write down, okay, I did this good. I did this bad. I'm very self-critical. I'm always analyzing, making sure that I'm doing things right and keeping mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, reliable myself too, like making sure that I'm training when I need to train and not just training my strengths, but training my weaknesses the most, you know? So yeah, yeah no, I'm, yeah. You, you, I, I think I read someplace that you have a mindset coach. I do. I'm so lucky. He's amazing. Um, he's amazing. He's over in the UK. It's called, it's called Mind Sport. Um, you can, he has a website now, which is really awesome. And mm -hmm. um, you can pay for it for monthly or for the year or whatever. But he has a lot of cool tricks in there, a lot of exercises to do. And it's so helpful, especially when I have fights coming up. And, you know, we talk all the time. And I'll call him and be like, hey, I need help deciding what to do with this. Or he'll just even help me with, like, life problems and stuff yeah. like yeah. so he's a, he's amazing and he definitely helps me get ready for fights and stuff because sometimes what is your, like you said, what is your favorite go-to like um drill that he's given you for for a you know to be successful and you know and keep that 
you know, good kind of mindset going while you're, you know, going through those difficult lifting exercises that you can't stand. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, actually, he has a, really, a, a lot of cool videos where he'll have like, he'll have like topics. So I'll have like the shark or the bear or um, the tiger and he'll like talk oh. about techniques mm -hmm. with the animal and saying like viciously saying how you're going to strike your opponent and like but relating it to an animal and I think it's really cool and he has like sound effects and stuff and like sometimes when I'm training I like think of those things and like I want to be like this animal and be aggressive and this you know so like that those are really cool and those really what's help your me. favorite one though Lindsay what's your what's favorite so one you go to or is it a secret uh no it's my secret um I think the shark one really gets me I go in it's very motivating I like the shark he's very it's very cool it's, so, it's a good so one. What do you do with the shark? Let's, let's well, hear. I just listened yeah. to the video. <laughs> I listened to the video and I mean, I can't recite it one for one, but he just, he, he just says things that like, it, like he scout, it, like it will, like it scouts, it's a, it's a, the thing that it wants to eat or whatever. And then it like gets it, like whips it apart. It's like really like vicious. I don't know. I just, oh, well, I, let's hear it. Man. I'm like, it's just, it, you know, it's fascinating to me. And, and I don't mean to make you uncomfortable, but it's like, we have, this, we have this side that's seriously like, I mean, human beings are the most brutal creatures on this planet. And we're getting like with this epidemic, you kind of get to see like how brutal we are because of yeah. the destruction or whatever we cause the planet, we cause each other in war and everything. And so this is, this sounds like it's a kind of a cool exercise. It's, it's personal to you. In, in some regards, it's like, okay, you can identify with the shark, you're on the hunt, and then it's a yeah. blood bath, you know, yeah. the shark tank. And I mean, we've done this in the cage at, at the gym that I go to, I see the guys getting in there pre-fight and they're like, okay, send another one in. He's going in the shark tank. And <laughs> yeah. you're, like, you're, the, you're, you're the potential swimmer without a life raft and they keep <laughs> sending in a shark and you're like, holy shit, I'm fighting for my life. Yeah. And, and it's like a fresh new like shark that's hungry coming at you but now you're turning it around and you're saying oh i'm the shark so let's let's hear it. what's what's what, you know how does that affect your mind um just like attacking and just um like it helps me confident wise because sometimes like a lot a lot of times when you have to fight like you have this like period where you're like oh my god why am i doing this i'm not even good and then like the week before the fight you're like i'm gonna kill this person i'm gonna like destroy them i'm gonna kick him in the face and knock him out. I'm going to do a spinning heel kick and knock him out. I'm going to fly and knee them in the face. I'm going to grab him, pat him. And it's like, how can you go so up and down? It's like such a freaking emotional roller coaster. But like we all, like every fight you go through this, so you start oh. doubting yourself. And But then I play these videos of my mind coach and I'm like, yeah, I got this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I really like those videos. He also has videos like meditation, which I really like too. Like those are my two favorites. I like to be able to calm my mind down. People ask me like, how I go in the cage so calm because I'll like meditate a lot and like I try to like be one and just chill out because there's just so much going on you get I get I mean I, I get really excited so I have to like calm myself down <laughs> yeah right wow that sounds yeah. really that it sounds like a, a good um you know to keep your mindset in in the right frame of mind actually while yeah. you're training and to keep you motivated and inspired as you go when when it does Definitely. become difficult for sure because I know it does. Um, it so does. What, are, what are what are three, you know, like what are what are some of your goals for the next, you know, few years? How do you see this playing out as a as a fighter for yourself? Well, 2020, I wanted to get that Adam Weight belt in Invicta because that's up for grabs right now. So um, that was my goal for this year is to get that belt. Um, so I don't know how it's going to – I don't know when – Everybody's going to start fighting again or anything. So I don't know how it's going to work out for this year, but hey, it could always be 2021. I'll be cool with that as long as I get the belt, you know. Yeah. I'll, let that, I'll let that happen. You know, it's fine. <laughs> but how, yeah, how, do you, how do you see yourself matching up against, like, like say, Jin Yu Fry? Um, I think she's a great fighter. I think we have a lot of the same um, attributes. Um, like, she likes to – she likes southpaw stance. I like to switch. And um, I think she's pretty well-rounded. Um, and I'm very well-rounded, but I think it would be a really fun fight. Um, but yeah, I think I just, I love testing myself against the best and I want to be the best. So, I mean, you won't know unless you fight the best, right? So that's my goal this year. Um, I don't know if they're going to do a tournament or what, but it, it'll be really fun. I would love to do a tournament. I think that'd be so cool. I've always wanted to fight multiple times in a night because for, for the most part, like you said, I finished fights. Like one of my fights I finished in Invicta in like 29 seconds or something like that. And like, I just wanted to keep, I wanted to fight again. And I'm just like, 
yo, I need a tournament so I can play it again. So I would love to do that. <laughs> sounds good. That sounds good. So I, I, I understand you, you'd like another rematch. I mean, you guys uh, against Rena, you had uh, two fights, you won one, you lost one, like in the last few seconds of the fight, it sounds like your coaches uh, through, you know, it was a uh, corner decision or something corner yeah it's a rough one it was a rough yeah, one it, that's tough it's a hard one to talk about for me um but yeah I feel like you know I didn't get the opportunity to to, to get out of that bad position um mm -hmm. I was finally feeling comfortable in position I wasn't really getting caught I was blocking a lot of the shots mm -hmm. even though Beth was like she was fine but you know it, it's hard as a coach so I'm not blaming him I was in a bad position I shouldn't have been in so but mm -hmm. I know I was fine, and I feel like that fight was just with me, and I definitely want to rematch. Because um, we already know I could beat her. I beat her once, and now she has the confidence of thinking she can beat me, but in my head, I know she didn't beat me, even though she did. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. like I said, like, it was she didn't finish. Thing. She didn't really finish you. She didn't really finish me, and yeah. we didn't get to go to the judges, even though I hate going to the judges, but yeah. I want that one back. And uh, it was, don't get me wrong, though, it was a lot of fun going to Japan. I would love to go to Japan again. Visa was amazing. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing card to be on. It was a great experience. I, would, I don't regret it at all, but obviously, I would have loved to win. Mm -hmm. So definitely want that one back. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough loss to me. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, any loss is going to be difficult. What I, I, you know, what was, you know, one of your biggest failures and how did you overcome it? How, how have you overcome it? Um, so th this one was one of my biggest failures. It was such a big lead up to it. I was going overseas for the first time. It was a lot, but I was ready for it and I felt good leading up to it. So um, I'm pissed that it went the way it did. So I just think that I need, like training wise, I just need, um, more girls my size, um, more, you know, you know, iron sharp, sharpens iron. So I'm actually, I was actually supposed to move last weekend to California. I was going to go train at Alliance for a while. So I was going to move to Cali. Um, once this is all over, I'm still going to be moving to Cali. I just don't know when now. <laughs> wow. okay, yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel like change sometimes uh, makes you fight a little harder. You know, I, I think I'm too comfortable here in Poughkeepsie and, um, you know, there's a lot of great people here, but I think I outgrew it a little bit and I just need more training partners. And, um, it's been really hard for me, uh, unless I move to the city because like I said, the girls at Henzo are great. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really want to live in the city though. I'd have to live like outside the city and commute. And I'm just so tired of driving all over the place. Cause living in Poughkeepsie, I'm driving 45 minutes to go train Muay Thai. I'm going an hour and a half, two hours yeah. to the city. Yeah, and then trying to, to work on top of that. Yeah, you could be training and maybe at one location and get that all in within a shorter period of time. Exactly. Yeah. Then I'm training, like I'm traveling 25, 30 minutes to go lift. It's just like if I could have it all in one location. And, you know, Alliance has, and like San Diego has all that in one area. So it'll be very helpful. <laughs> I'm just so much traveling. I, it, it's going to save me a lot of time. Wow. So yeah, um, that's what I'm really excited about. <laughs> that sounds good. You had an... Um, what did you learn from having a concussion? Oh you yeah, so concussion, you know, it's at, at some point. I don't know what fight it was, but y you had mentioned that um, you know you learned something from that. Yeah, it's it's you know I never really suffered any bad uh, concussions in my career until this past summer, mm -hmm. um, and it's hard because it was such like. Fighting's always up and down, but like fighting at Madison Square Garden and winning against Fana was like the peak of my career so far. It was like the biggest fight. And you know, who doesn't want to fight at Madison Square Garden? So like the whole thing was an amazing experience. I was like on a high for like a week, you know? Yeah, so, um, but I also ignore the fact that before that fight, I got a concussion like two weeks out, like bad. Oh. I got like knocked out in jujitsu. Um, During your training? <laughs> During your training? Yeah. And it, yeah, we were just doing live goes um, yeah. from the ground, and uh, my partner went to go get do a double leg, and I was sitting over him passing, so he hit uh, underneath my chin, and I, I went out on my feet, like I kind of stood up, and I was out on my feet, and then I fell, but in my head, I didn't know this happened. In my head, I thought I just got pushed back. Yeah. I fell. So I was like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, but I think I'm just going to sit out just to be safe, and like... I know I was a little sensitive to lie a little bit and like my head kind of felt weird, but I didn't think anything of it because I was so in the zone, which is stupid of me. Like I should have known like, hey, you have a concussion. But I was so excited for that fight that I didn't even think twice about it. And I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, and I'm fine. Um, so after that fight, me and my friends were talking about it. My training partners were like, dude, you were out. Like we were all so scared and like we didn't know what to do. And I was like, 
I'm glad you didn't say anything because I was fine fighting, but like, obviously that's not what us fighters should do, but it's hard because, you know, that's our income. It's what we've been training for for so long, you know? So it's like hard to pull out of fights. And that's like what a lot of fighters have problems with going into fights with injuries, which every fighter does. Like we all talk about going into fights with injuries because mm-hmm. you'll never probably fight if you don't go and fight with fights with injuries, but mm-hmm. your brain's very important. So um, you think I would have learned my lesson then, but no, like a month after I got that concussion, I got another concussion in boxing. Mm-hmm. And I already took a fight in Invicta against Jessica Devani in August, which is, doesn't give you a lot of time to get ready for us. I just fought. Right. Um, so to come off that high and like, you have to go through this system before you fight. And like to go from that high, to go back to the low, to climb that ladder again, to get ready for the peak of the fight, it just didn't happen for me. And I knew I wasn't myself going into that fight. And I shouldn't have fought because my, I mean, I didn't even spar at all in between wow. those two fights because I couldn't, I couldn't even lift heavy or do hard workouts because my brain was like it was bad and I thought I, I don't know who I told I think I told my coaches I thought I told my mental coach and like all of them were like you should have told me but I told you not to do the fight and I'm like I thought I told you but like I didn't know who I told who I didn't I don't know I was messed up <laughs> right, right. Wow. and um yeah I went into that Invicta fight and I knew going in I'm like I don't know how I'm gonna pull this off but like I was just not myself at all and even like it's funny because after I came out of that cage that night um Cutman Craig he's my man he asked my hands. Um, he was like, he looked at me, he was like, that wasn't you. And I was like, nah, man, it was bad. <laughs> but learning from that experience is like, you have, like, we have, as fighters, we have to take care of ourselves. And sometimes we're going to have to make that hard decision not to fight. And there'll always be another fight. But in our heads, we just want to keep fighting. So it's hard. So we have to make sure that we tell our coaches, we tell people that, like, need to take care of us, it's, like, take us out of fights because. Um, our brains are really important. Like, what if I went into that fight and I got knocked out? I mean, it could have ended my career. So it's just like, it was really stupid. And I regret it, obviously. Also, I regret it because I lost and that's on my record. So it's really hard. And I know I could have beat that chick. And the other thing that pisses me off is like, it was a split decision and I feel like I pulled it out. So that's like annoying too, to the fact that like, jujitsu, I knew I relied on my jujitsu in that fight because I didn't want to get knocked out because like, obviously that was like a few of my head, like, hey, that could be career ending. Mm -hmm. So like, I went to my jujitsu, but it's like, Man, I had on a lot of submissions, so I don't know. They, she, really never, she never really hurt me, you know. So it was a hard – I guess it's hard to judge or whatever because – but I was just mad because I felt like I won that fight even though – Yeah. With everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's tough, you know. Like, it's tough when you've gone into something with, a, with an injury, especially um, uh, uh, suffering a concussion prior to going into the cage. That's yeah. – that's sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you learned something. Now you know, yeah. like something should happen. You got to be like, you got to take care of be first. You know, like you have to, you have to play the game smart. Yeah, you got to think of your future fighting. It's a too. lifelong game. It's a lifelong yes. game. You know. So what? What? Are, what? What have been your greatest? You know, your greatest challenge when dealing with fear, and how, how have you managed to overcome certain fears? Um, yeah, I think the greatest feel, I, I don't know if I mentioned it before, is um, not performing at my best. Like my, I know what I'm capable of. And when I get in there and I don't do what I am capable of, it makes me really mad. And I also don't want to be embarrassed. And like, I'm embarrassed when I don't do my best, you know? So like, I hate watching my fights where I lose because I'm like, that wasn't my best. And it makes me mad. So that's like my biggest fear is just going in there and not performing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, even my first loss in Victor against Kelly D'Angelo, she's amazing. Um, she did a great job and she had a great game plan. And I learned that I need to have better game plans at this point in my career and stuff like that. But also that I didn't have the confidence going into that fight. I don't, I forget what it was. I probably wrote it down somewhere because I wrote everything down, but mm-hmm. um, looking at all my fights and seeing what I need to do to get myself in the zone and stuff like that. But looking back on it, like I just, uh, I wasn't myself in there that night either. Cause I, ah, I remember now. Yeah. I hadn't, um, I told my oblique like two weeks before that fight. Wow. So I couldn't rotate. So I'd be, okay, I was wow. like, all right, so I'm not going to do any more sparring. That's painful. Oy. Yeah. It was so painful. Like, I couldn't roll out of bed. So, yeah. and I'm, and like, I'm excited. It's my Invicta debut. I'm like, I'm not dropping on this, this fight. My coaches are like, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Like, you'll heal before then. Just like, chill out. But for me, I need, I need to be able to train before my fights. Even two weeks out, I like to shadow box. I like to like, feel mm-hmm. ready. I like to feel confident. And when I can't, even throw an uppercut because I can't twist. I just remember like testing it out here and there. I'll be like at Kings of Fitness and I'll be, yeah. you know, they'd be helping me getting ready, doing things I can do. And then I would go and shadow box in between sets or something like lightly. And then I would just like slightly twist to throw like an uppercut. And I was just be like, oh shit. So then, so now I'm going into this fight thinking, okay, I can't throw this. I can't throw that. I don't want this to mess me up. And then I just remember after the fight thinking, I'm so stupid. I would have been fine if I just didn't think 
that I was injured. I just went in there and just said, screw it. Because you yeah. don't really, I mean, you feel stuff when you're in there, obviously, but like you have the adrenaline, so you can kind of get through it. And I'm like, would have rather just have won the fight and like dealt with the pain after, even though I wasn't in pain in the fight. It's just weird. It's like very mental. So yeah. I learned from that fight that like, yeah. even when you're it, it, up, it sounds like it, it upset one of your personal habits of drilling. Yes. Yeah, I need to drill. And so, you know, like you, you upset your, you know, your personal success habit of drilling and you, you couldn't do that. And you're like, okay, how do I, Oh, you know, I, this is what yeah. I do to, and so like, exactly. I it mean, me out. <laughs> is this an aha moment for you right now? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Like if I, I need certain things to go certain ways. And obviously that's like a problem. Like when you, you can't control everything. So obviously I told my own, like, I can't control it. But now mentally knowing that that's a problem I have going into fights. Like if I can't drill, yeah. it freaks me out. Like, I don't know. I, I told myself I'd never let that happen again. And I'll pull out of the fight. Because what's so your told, favorite saving, your little saying that you say, dr drillers are, make what? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, killer, uh, drillers make killers or something. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, I love drilling. So, like, yeah, like you said, I, I mentally now know going to fight. Like, I need to tell, like, I told my coaches, like, listen, if I get an injury two weeks out and I can't move, like, just call the fight. I, I can't mentally deal with it. Like, I might be able to physically get by it or figure out what I have to do to win that fight, but mentally it just screws me up. Like, maybe I'm better now that I've dealt with it a couple of times before fights, but I hate losses where I know that's what happened going into it, you know? And it's not an excuse or anything. Obviously, like, I went to that fight, and, like, I always think of it, too. I think Kat Zagano said one of those, uh, that really hit home in one of the po uh, podcasts or interviews that she did, and she was saying, like, it doesn't matter what's going on. Like, if you're in a fight for your life, like, you're in the jungle and you're with a fight and somebody's going to die, like, you need to fight. So, like, if you have an injury, it doesn't freaking matter. Like, you have to win that fight. So, like, that's always stuck with me, too. I'm like, yeah, she's right. Like, it doesn't matter if you have an injury going to the fight. You just got to fight. So, like, then I get that in my head. I'm like, I got this. And then mentally I'm still like, oh, I have an injury. <laughs> yeah, right. So, it's, it's a battle. It's a mental looming battle. in the back of your head. It's looming in the yeah. back of your head. Even wow. if you think you, like, got past it, it's still back yeah. there somewhere, you know? <laughs> It doesn't leave. I mean, I injured myself uh, so many years ago with an ACL issue that I, I, I never had surgery. And I've said this a, a gazillion times over the podcast. And it's always in the back of my mind, just even when I'm training, you know, mm -hmm. like just, you know, going in and training at the gym, not that I'm in the position of um, ever competing, but it's just like, oh, I got to be careful when yeah. I train because I mean, this could throw me out, you know, of of work or anything yeah. else that I do. And I don't want to be laid up. Yeah. Know, it sucks. <laughs> months, six months with my leg up or something, yeah. that, you know, to recover from something. It's, it's such a, it's such a, you know, Terrible. tremendous, tremendous thing as a professional fighter to have to contend with. I mean like that, that alone having to deal with just that. And plus you're dealing with mm. everything else. It's huge. Yeah. I think that's like a big thing that, um, in MMA that needs to change because like I said, a lot of fighters go into fights with injuries and it's because yeah. that's our source of income. Like we yeah. need to fight or else we don't get paid. So it's yeah. like, doesn't matter how long you were training for before that fight, how many fights dropped off, people not making way in your fight getting canceled. It doesn't matter because like, you need to, in order to get paid, you need to fight. So like a lot of fighters go into fights with injuries. And I think that they need to make something so that if you get injured, you're not like your whole life is not in shambles because yeah. I mean, you have no income somehow come up with it. So like, you know how football players, they get like a contract, an annual contract or, or, you know, for how many years that they're going to play for a certain promotion and, mm -hmm. and, and they get paid, you know, whether yeah. they play or they don't play, whether they're on the injured list and then, yeah. they, and then they can, you know, go to another team. I wish somehow they would feed something do in MMA or boxing so that it's, it's actually, you know, it's really more of a legit, um, you know, source of income or career path. Yeah, for exactly. For a fighter, you know, it should yeah. be because they make so much freaking money. The promotions themselves. Yeah, I gotta they need to do they, something for us fighters because it's rough. Yeah. It's rough out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are you going to make, you know, I mean, right now, like say for, the UFC, you got to wear all of what, um, what is it, Adidas yeah. or Nike or something? Yeah, Reebok, yeah. Reebok, Reebok. Um, yeah, I mean, you have to wear all their gear. Yeah. You know, I'm like, well, that's a team mentality. I'm like, start paying these fighters like they're a team member then. Yeah, exactly. You tell them. Come on, Dina. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, well, I think I have to get that more on the mindset. Years ago, I, I, I was you know, driving the force for women's mixed martial arts when nobody else was. 
and nobody else saw the vision. I mean, I can't even tell you how many men were like, ah, that's never going to happen. Even Dana White was like, that's not going to happen. Yes. Ronda Rousey showed up. But, um, yeah. you know, we all knew it was coming. It was just a matter because there was a wheel. There was an engine. There was, a, there was people in, in the underground that were like building this. And, and yeah. there was a lot of female fighters. And now you're benefiting from that. So now it's like we got we to gotta change how people are getting, the fighters are getting paid. And even, even like us little tweaky people that are like, you know, doing this. I mean, like, I don't get yeah. paid for doing this. This is all on my time. I'm yeah. like, and, and it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. Put yeah. this out to put this out. Yeah, I'm doing it because I'm interested in MMA and I'm interested in seeing women's MMA grow. I think it's great for confidence and, and for Definitely. women in general, it's empowering. And, and I mean, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge commitment on my part, but it, you know what? It lays out for somebody young like you. I mean, 20 years ago, this wasn't even a field yeah. that you could get into. Exactly. And, and now it is. And, and for, you know, the next generation of women, you, you came up when you were a little girl. You know, yeah. you started training when you were a little girl and now you can actually, you can actually get paid for this. Wow. It's not, I know, it's crazy. It's not just about going to the Olympics where you never get paid. You're, you're supported if you get into the Olympics, but you're, you know, you're not getting paid and maybe you might get on a box of cereal later on, but there was no like guaranteed pay. You were yeah. paid as a professional fighter. Last year you made, you did five, five or six fights. So you actually, I mean, your income was a, a, a pretty much probably a professional fighter. So let's see how this transitions out. It, it may not in your, your career, but maybe in the next girl that's starting at seven or eight, listening to this, mm -hmm. listening to you, that it happens. I hope so. <laughs> like, uh, maybe there's another promotion like Shannon Knapp, who's, who's an innovator and, and she comes up with a better plan for you know paying out fighters and 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 doing you know like the right thing by the fighters because that's i know that's what she's all about yeah she's so, amazing yeah so she's tell even checked on me she reaches out to all the girls she's so yeah. sweet Love her. yeah she does a really great job she really does care so and i mean she's worked in both fields though she started out i mean she worked for a strike force you know like so she knows the whole the, that whole <laughs> spiel as well as you know, now kind of working with the UFC plus, you know, obviously her own, her own, uh, promotion. So can you share a story when you felt inadequate or were told no, because you were a woman and how did you handle that? I have a couple actually The the greatest story I have is when I was 16, this big dude, he's probably like 200 something pounds. He was a big dude. Um, came into the gym and, and can, can I just pause on that? And how much do you weigh? I'm, I'm 118 right now, but I'm usually like 112. Oh, he's like 200 and so, he's like over hundred yeah, he's like pounds. double my weight. Yeah. yeah. So the whole class, I remember the whole class, he was making comments, girls shouldn't be doing this, looking over at me and like telling my coach that women should, shouldn't be training and they're, they're meant to be beautiful and make sandwiches in the kitchen, stupid shit. Like the typical crap that guys say, joking around now, but like things that used to be said. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there and I'm, I'm, I was quiet. I was 16, you know, I was just like, so like young and like, oh my God, I don't know what to do with the situation. And it's time to bowl. And my coach looks at me and he's like, you're going with him first. And in my head, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> you know, I'm like, shit. This <gasps> I can't believe he just put me with him. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh God. And the guy looked at me and he goes, he looks at me dead in my eyes and shaking my hand. And he's like, I don't care that you're a girl. I don't care that you're small on me. I'm going to go all out on you. And yeah, he was like so nasty. He was like, I don't give a crap. And I'm just like, oh my God. You know, oh I'm just a nervous Oh, my God, oh my God if you tell girl. Me. Yeah, so I I was better at, like, you know, I started, you know, I'm, I'm smaller than anybody, so my guard game was really good. So I kind of just, like, let him push me over and, I, and let him come into my guard. And I triangled him. No, I armbarred him. I armbarred him so fast. And he had a tap. And I got up. I was like, this is the greatest moment of my life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got up, and I was kind of like, slowly walked away to get like a drink of water and I'm like in my head I'm like I can't believe I just did that I'm so proud of myself and this guy gets up he, pissed. he yeah. gets up pissed he's he's like walking around the room like pacing back and forth and he's like all right all right let's go again and he starts yelling at me like let's go again let's go and I looked at my coach and I'm like I gotta go I picked up my gear and I just left I was like I gotta go thank you have a good one and I left and I'm like ha <laughs> like, yeah the smart you, move get the hell out now yeah i'm like yeah, did you do this shit? and it lets you beat people who don't know what the hell they're doing on like jokes like him and i'm like yeah 
what girl should it be in this for? Like, I was so mad. It was, I mean, so happy. I was so excited. And I was like, that's still probably one of the best moments of my life. Like, up there with Madison Square Garden because he was talking shit the whole time. And I was so young and I was all nervous. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Good for you. No, did that guy ever come back to the gym? Did you ever see him after that again? Nope. Nope, he never came back. Isn't that probably fascinating, his ego right? Was like, yeah, his ego probably uh, got well, I knew that was going to happen. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, like, as soon as you, like, started the story, I was like, I bet you. You're like, oh, yeah. This is happening. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, um, I'll never forget it. And I was like, I was mad at my coach for, like, putting him with me at first. I was like, why is he doing this to me? <laughs> but yeah, then when that exactly. happened, was, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, good for you. I'm glad you, yeah. you you had the and that you had the wherewithal to to say, okay, I'm out of here. Too. Yeah, yeah. I that's was like, scary. Mm -hmm. That's a scary scene, scene when when a man that size wants to actually do physical oh, yeah. harm. Well, because he was pissed, and I was like, no, I'm not. I already beat him. I'm walking out. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. exactly. Everybody laughed at me. I came back the next day and they're like, yo, we were cracking up when you left. You just walked out. You were like, peace. <laughs> yeah, good like, for yeah. you. Good for you. Yeah. Wow. So that's a great story. I'm glad. I'm so glad, you know, you're, you're here and you're able to share it. So how, um, how do you see like, um, you know, the next, well, I mean, with this pandemic and everything, um, have you had any word about anything that might be coming up for you for fights or anything like that? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll probably be fighting for Invicta next. Um, I miss them. It's been too long. <laughs> yeah, right. um, but yeah, I'm hoping something with Invicta next, um, whenever they end up being able to start up again. I am excited because I'm pretty sure they're trying to come to the East Coast a little bit. My manager's been working with them and um, trying to get stuff going in that aspect. So it'll be cool to hopefully my, I mean, I don't know what they're setting up or anything, but I'm hoping that they get that tournament thing going yeah. and uh, my family and all my friends and stuff will be able to come because it'll be closer. So, cause I mean, I've been fighting in Kansas city, which is great. Don't get me wrong, but like, obviously people can't come. So I'll be excited to sell some tickets and get some people out there and um, for Victor to grow and uh, you know, go more on like, the coasts and uh, get more fans and stuff, get more out there. So it'll be good. So how are you keeping your mo yourself motivated now? Like with, with being at home, not having, you know, like, I mean, not being able to get to the gym and train with, you know, your peers and yes. yeah. How, how are you managing with that? Oh girl, I have my ups and downs. I think we all have our good days and our bad days. Like I'll have my good days. And I'm like, yeah, I'm killing it. I can do this. And then like, I'll have my day. I'm like, I miss my training corners. I can't do anything without them. Yeah. You know? So I've, I've been having my ups and downs. Last night was like a night where I was like, I can't train jujitsu. I can't do this. So what I'm trying to do is focus on what I can do and that's get stronger. So I'm just trying to Good. keep my lifts going, get stronger that way. And then also, you know, watch some videos, read through my fight notebook, just keep it all fresh in my mind. So when I can go back, I can beat some people up. <laughs> cool. So do you have any uh, parting words of wisdom for anybody, you know, any of the fighters that are upcoming or, you know, like even, I mean, especially during this particular time in our history where, you know, sports have been kind of, you know, we're, we're not able to watch any sporting yeah, events. So crazy. Right you know, do you have any words of wisdom for anybody that's listening right now who might be, you know, training, who might want to be like you someday or any of the other fighters that are out there? Uh, I think everybody's saying the same thing, like be safe. Obviously, like you, I mean, there's those days where I'm like, I'm just going to hit someone up and I'm going to go train. It'll be fine. But, and then I just kind of bring myself back and I'm like, listen, what if you gone and got sick and then you affect your family and then you just think of what ifs and then say a family member dies because people are dying out there and this is really serious. So, we have to fight those urges, uh, especially as fighters, fight those urges not to go and train with people because it's a very close combat sport. So obviously training is not six feet distance apart. So I'm just, like I said, I'm trying to be good and, you know, telling all people, like, even though, like, you really want to train. And like I said, it's a source of income for me too. Like I want to train people too and make some money, but it's just not the time to do it. Like we have to all be safe and just obviously stay positive, keep doing, do what you can do is what I've just been telling people, like, do what you can do, stay positive, and just hopefully, you know, we're going to get through this. It's, hopefully yeah. it's over soon, but we don't know how long this is going to be, so just kind of realize that it's not, we're going to look back on this time, and it's going to go fast, and we're we'll like, oh, it was only a couple months. Right now, it's like day by day, you're like, it just feels right. like forever, <laughs> but we're going to look back on it, and it's not going to be that bad. We're going to be like, oh, it was only a couple months, like, we were being stupid when I was like, you know, so just like, it's, it's going to pass. Day by day might suck, but when we look back on it, like I said, it's just not going to be that bad. And 
Oh. You know, we're all in the same boat. It's not like some people can fight and some people can't. I mean, right. obviously, UFC is awesome, and they're going to try to throw some fights on with Boss, which is going to be awesome. But yeah. for the most part, all of us fighters are all in the same boat. Nobody's going to be really getting that ahead of anybody because we all can't train. So we got to stick this through, and when we all can get back, we can all get back, you know? Yeah. So just look back that, on that, that was good. Up. We're all stuck in the same boat, and yeah. none of us are training right now, so we're, we'll all be still the same where we left off. We're just taking yeah. a pause. Maybe we're healing our injuries that we've had. Yeah, that's a positive note. Like, yeah. all of us have nagging little injuries that we should be healing yeah. right now. So we'll so all come back. Time to heal up them. and focus on that. That's great. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, Lindsay, remind fans where they can find you on social media and maybe give any shout outs to sponsors. Um, that, you know, the floor is yours right now. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, Damsel underscore MMA is my Instagram. I'm on there the most. I'm an Instagrammer. Um, Facebook, I kind of, sorry, I was like a hair. Um, <laughs> my cat's over here now. Um, I'm on Facebook a little bit too. So, Lindsay Van Zandt on my fight page, Lindsay Damsel Van Zandt. Um, I don't really do Twitter. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm not a big Twitter person. It's too confusing, complicated for me. Um, <laughs> me too. But um, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my sponsors. I just got an awesome new sponsor that I'm going to be posting about again soon. Um, Titan Water Ionizer, um, Titan USA. Um, it's great because especially during this time, I get nice water that's alkaline and has uh, molecular hydrogen in it. So it's going to help me fight off those bad bacteria and all the bad stuff that me eat and the acidic foods and just putting my body in alkaline and like being safe, you know? So I'm lucky that I have them. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, but yeah, I'll be posting more about them soon. Um, but thank you to like Kings of Fitness. So sending me programs and stuff. And oh. as I've been posting a little bit more lately, cause I've been able to lift more, uh, get my strength up, my deadlifts that I just posted the other day. So yeah, shout out to them. And just, you know, I have a lot of sponsors. So I don't want to like go on, but I'll, I'll post, I'll make a big post when I post this awesome interview. And thank you so much for having me. Like, I haven't done an interview in, since my last fight. I did like 20 interviews and then I haven't had an interview in a while. So it's nice to, to start talking again. And uh, I'm so passionate about MMA, so being able to talk about it again, I, I appreciate it. So thank you for having me, Hot. Awesome. <laughs> it was wonderful having you on the show and, and actually getting to know you. I, I really enjoyed hearing all your stuff. And and I, I wish you the best. Like, I, I mean, it, just, uh, you know, this year coming up, we all want to see a fight, obviously. I mean, the last fights that we saw, it was an incredible weekend for women's MMA. I mean, and Victor yes. had that, that crazy show with the tournament. Oh I mean, God, it was amazing. Was, there, there was one good fight after another. And then the UFC with um, Chung, Chung, Chung Wai Lee and uh, yeah. John. Yeah. Oh my God, what a weekend that was. I'm going to probably Woo! watch it again. I can't I mean, stop watching that. I'm still <laughs> reeling after that. So we're going to yeah, be really so ready real. for something coming down. The, the next show, everybody's going to be like, woohoo, gangbusters, you know? Like, yeah. So, so we have that. We will all look forward to that. And once again, it was great having you on the show. I hope to have you back on maybe when you're... Yes. When you when you schedule another fight, either before or after it, I'm always open to that. You can just reach out to me directly on Facebook. It'd be great to have you. And again, stay safe out there, Lindsay. Yes, you too. Thank and you. Be well, be well, of course. Um, thanks again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>